Hello everyone, in the final week of 2025, I wanted to get out a short video because many of you have spotted a new clinicaltrials.gov protocol from my lab and I'm getting more emails than I can respond to about it. So I'm gonna answer the most frequent questions here. First, as you probably know, clinicaltrials.gov is where research groups like mine make their clinical trial protocols publicly available. So you can go there and you can see if there's a clinical trial open for your condition. The protocol I released is called low-dose naltrexone for ME-CFS dose finding. Now this is not a clinical trial. It's a smaller study that's in preparation for a later clinical trial that I hope will be funded. Now as the title states, the study tests low-dose naltrexone in myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome, and the focus is on examining the response to different dosages of LDN. The success of a clinical trial really hinges on the proper dose being selected. If we use a dose that's too low, it won't be efficacious. If we select a too high of a dose, there will be intolerable side effects. And this is particularly an issue with low-dose naltrexone because the dosages are so small. So a relatively small increase can, can make a big difference in the effect. Some studies may use a dose like 3 milligrams a day. Other studies have used dosages like 6 milligrams a day. And that may not seem like a huge difference, but it actually is. Of course, 6 milligrams is twice the dose is three milligrams, and that can completely change the response. Now, clinically, you know, outside of clinical trials, I mean, like what your physician may do, the best practice may be individualizing the dose. But for clinical trials that are scientific, that's not really practical to do. And so we have to select the one target dose, or maybe two at the max, three different dosages. And we want to have some flexibility for individual differences, but the more dosages that we include in the study, uh, the more the statistical power is reduced, and that can lead to an underpowered study, which will fail. And so we only want to have preferably one or two target dosages include, included in the clinical trial. Um, so before we start clinical trials, we do studies like this dose finding study to gather more information, and it allows us to make the best decision on what dosage or dosages will be included in the full clinical trial. Now, this dose finding study that's announced right now, it's not yet recruiting. We don't even have the funds to run it yet. And while I think unlikely, it is possible the study never gets run. And that's because I'm required to post a clinicaltrials.gov protocol before the decision to give me funding is made. For example, National Institutes of Health doesn't make a final decision on funding until I have an IRB or Institutional Review Board approval, but my IRB won't review the study until I've registered it with ct.gov. And so even when it's posted on ct.gov, there are multiple regulatory steps that have to be cleared afterwards before I can get the funding to actually run the study. And that can definitely be a source of confusion for people looking up these studies and wondering why they're not recruiting. So if you see trials on ct.gov that close without ever starting, this is one reason why that sometimes happens. Now, I don't expect that to be an issue with this study, uh, but it can happen and it has happened to me before many years ago. So that's the basic story. Uh, we're not opening a new full clinical trial right now. When we get to that point, I will definitely announce it on this channel. Uh, in the meantime, this small dose finding study is recruiting only 75 individuals throughout the United States. So it's, it's quite small. This is a fully remote study. And when it opens for recruitment, it, will, it should fill up pretty quickly. Um, I wouldn't worry about trying to get into this study, the dose finding study. It's not an efficacy trial. And so for most people, the later full clinical trial will be the better study to join anyway. 
I hope that all makes sense. Uh, the bottom line is keep an eye out on this channel because I always announce when a new study starts recruitment. This is the fastest place to get that information. So that's it for now. Um, I have a growing collection of important new scientific advances I have to share with you. Uh, so I hope you're able to catch my video next Monday, which will be the first video of mine for 2026. And I will see you soon.